So I'm learning more and more about celiacs and what I'm learning is that people of celiacs often have also dairy and egg allergies. So I want to introduce a few more vegan cake recipes that are so tasty that vegan and non-vegans, gluten and non-gluten eaters can enjoy together. But I haven't really tried to make any kind of vegan cream cakes or sponge cakes. So that will be a new adventure for myself. So I figured I'm going to start with the simplest recipe, which should be a vanilla cake. I looked up a few recipes and now the only thing I have to figure out is how I'm going to make those recipe gluten-free and vegan. And if you'd like to learn more about gluten-free baked deliciousness, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I have a book out. It is on Kindle Unlimited and so it's free if you have that subscription and it's called Gluten-Free Sugar Gazelle. So I'm going to get going with my gluten-free vegan vanilla cake experiment. And the first thing I have to figure out is my flour combination. So I'm going to default back to my three flour combinations which I know have worked in the past. And then I'm going to make two new variations of it. And the three recipes I'm going to try out is first my vanilla sponge cake, then I'm going to try out my pound cake flour combination, and I'm going to try out also my vanilla cake recipe flour combination. And as I said, I'm going to try then two more custom variations out and let's see how that's going to turn out for me. Here's my vanilla sponge cake flour combination. I already have it pre-mixed. So I'm just going to weigh 45 grams. And I'm going to label it. So that's going to be version 1. And my version 2 will be my vanilla cake flour combination. And yes, I'm measuring very small amounts so I don't end up with 10 different vanilla cakes and have to figure out how to eat all of them. So that's my version 2 and that's my vanilla cake. Number 3 is going to be my pound cake flour combination. And now I'm going to start with my custom flour combinations. The difference between my custom flour combinations 4 and 5 is that the number 4 uses sweet rice flour and the number 5 uses potato starch. I'm going to add now 34 grams of sugar to each of my flour combination bowls. I'm going to add a pinch of salt and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda which is called an island bread soda. That was confusing when I just moved here. And a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And I'm going to add 16 grams of oil to each of the bowls. Now, that's a tricky measurement to make. So I'm going to measure first how much one tablespoon of oil weighs. And then I can use tablespoon as my measurement instead of weighing 16 grams of oil. So one and a half tablespoon of oil should be approximately 16 grams of oil. And that's much easier to measure. I like to use sunflower oil or rapeseed oil because it doesn't have any additional flavors. And for the vanilla flavor, I'm going to add now half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I have to add vegan milk to each of the bowls as well. And I'm going to measure about a quarter cup for each of them. I'm going to use today coconut milk, but you can also use almond milk or soy milk. The very nice thing about some of the very basic cake recipes is that you don't need any additional equipment. All you need is a spatula and the whisk. So I'm going to quit combine ingredients and I'm just going to use a whisk for that. The batter of a vanilla cake is normally pretty liquid. While I'm mixing here the different bowls, I'm actually feeling how the different flour combinations create sort of a different texture. It's kind of neat. The only thing what I have to add now to the different flour combination is a quarter teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And the combination of baking powder, baking soda and apple cider vinegar or you can also use white vinegar, helps the cake to rise. And I want to quick show you a really nifty little experiment. I'm going to add to this bowl a little bit of baking soda. And now I'm going to add some apple cider vinegar. And check this out. Can you see how it foams up? That's pretty neat. I love this experiment. So I'm going to add now to each of the bowls a quarter teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. I'm certainly going to give it a quick stir again. I'm going to pour now my flour combinations into small little cupcake forms. I'm going to bake it and then I can compare my different variations of my vanilla cake and see how they turned out. I'm going to put now my trials in the oven for about 30 minutes and see if they're ready. If not, I'm going to just increase the time a little bit. So here are my gluten-free vegan vanilla cake experiments. 
and I may have baked them a little bit too long. My first variation seems to have a little bit of a muffin top, so that might not be quite what I'm looking for, but I'm seeing that number three, my pound cake recipe, and my number four custom flour recipe seem to look pretty good. I'm gonna take them now out of the muffin form and let them cool down, and then I'm gonna open up the cakes and check which variation looks good inside as well. So here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna check out which of the vegan vanilla gluten-free cupcakes create this really nice tasty cake, which I would be proud on serving to my friends. Some of the vanilla cupcakes didn't really make it. I mean, they're too much of a muffin top, so I'm not gonna even cut them open and check how they look like. However, there are two possibilities. One is the vanilla cake where I used my pound cake recipe, and the other one is a custom flour combination. And let's compare. The number one, which is the pound cake, there's a nice cutting into it. It is pretty soft, and it just fell apart on me. Okay, so that's maybe not ideal. And let's try the custom version. Now the custom version is actually holding up. So that's kind of nice. So I think I'm gonna try this one more time. And this time I'm gonna use a little bit less coconut milk and I'm gonna replace the oil with vegan butter substitute and see if there are any differences. And for this experiment, I'm just gonna try out my gluten-free pound cake flour combination. So let's check it out and see how my second trial round went. Well, here I can lift off the top, so that might not be good for a cake. Okay, so this is the one with vegan butter. Uh, it's denser, so that makes sense. But see how crumbly this is? Uh, I mean, you don't really want to have a crumbly cake, so that is not quite as successful. And here's the version where I used oil. And um, I'm noticing the same thing. It's a very crumbly cake. And yeah, I don't really want to have a crumbly cake, or at least not crumbly that when I put my fork in it, the cake falls apart. And that's probably because it's a gluten-free flour combination. And here we go into composting. Wonder how many more trials I need before I get this one right. So for my trial number three, I'm gonna use now flaxseed egg and Fusillium husk and compare those two and see if that helps of making my cake not just crumble crumble along or something like that. So I'm hoping the Fusillium husk and the flaxseed eggs are gonna act here as glue. I'm gonna make now a flaxseed egg. I'm gonna prepare the Fusillium husk and I'm gonna add the Fusillium husk to one of the bowls. And here are my finished third trial cupcakes. Let's have my fingers crossed that my trial number three worked out. These are the cupcakes with the flax seeds. And that are the cupcakes where I used psyllium husk. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay, I'm getting cutting in into the one with the flax seeds. Oh, look at that. It's holding up and it's not falling apart. Ha! Huh. Let's see how it tastes. And it's nice and moist. Ooh, I'm excited. So this one is the um, cupcake where I used Fusillium husk. If I compare the cupcakes with the Fusillium husk, it's a little bit chewier than the one where I used the flaxseed eggs, but both of them are workable. The one with Fusillium husk definitely creates a little bit of a gummier sort of cupcake. And the winner will be the recipe using a flaxseed egg. And yes, I finally figured it out and I don't have to do more trials. What a relief. I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.